गुड मॉर्निंग बॉयज गर्ल्स लेडीज एंड जेंटल सभी को नमस्कार आई एम सो हैप्पी टू बी एबल टू ज्वाइन ऑल ऑफ यू इन दिस सीरीज ऑफ योग इंटर्न ट्रेनिंग ऑफ द कॉमन योगा प्रोटोकॉल This is a twenty-hour training which Kavilidham is conducting in collaboration with the University of Mumbai, the SNDT Women's University, the Hyderabad Sindh National Collegiate Board, the Hyderabad Sindh National Collegiate University. So it's a good collaboration where we are aiming to reach you to reach around 7 lakh students throughout these times and reach out for what reach out to take the message take the understanding of yoga to all of you so we are going to be in discussion for probably 45 minutes i have been told that uh, the span of attention of our dear young students is reducing uh, and i have been following that up clearly and i wish that through these practices your span of attention is able to increase you all have been home for a long time aap sabhi log apne ghar par rahe hain नियंत्रित रहे हैं और आप लोगों ने प्रत्याहार का पालन किया योग में प्रत्याहार इज लाइक बीइंग एबल टू कंट्रोल योर सेंस ऑर्गन्स योर कर्मेंद्रिया सो यू हैव बीन देयर एंड दीज प्रैक्टिसेस व्हाट यू लर्न प्रॉब्ली विल बी वेरी हेल्पफुल वेरी हेल्पफुल एंड आई कैन वाउच दिस फ्रॉम माई ओन एक्सपीरियंस बिकॉज आई हैव बीन not only born in the institution but i also studied like you i graduated from kc college did my graduation there and then went on to do my law and one thing which i constantly did you know and and i like you you are student so you want to have fun and you want to enjoy yourself and uh, you want to sometimes study and sometimes play sports uh, but uh, overall i would say that uh, i have had my ups i have had my downs but one thing which has been constant and which has helped me is my ability to be with myself ability to spend time with myself so it's very simple uh, when we speak of yoga you have been doing the practices with shri shinde ji shinde ji ke sath aap abhyas kar rahe hain and you would realize that uh, you know it is about that ability of you to be together be with your own self and that is what we are trying to build up so we have 10 lectures 10 lectures and discussions uh why are we doing these lectures that's a question so we are doing this because we want the student fraternity and all those who are attending this program to be able to understand the most basic principles of yoga very simple we are trying to make things simple there have been some difficulties in our transmission because of you know nature because of unforeseen circumstances and that i say is a very very important part of your life because here is where you learn because all of the students in march were actually rejoicing that you know for some examination was just going to finish for some it has finished and we were all waiting for the vacation we had the perfect picture in mind and then what happened and then this happened the covid 19 the pandemic and now we are on a forced vacation at home for last 
more than 80 days. We have no choice. So in life, there are circumstances when conditions are not favorable. And as students, as youngsters, we need to keep this in mind that these are the times when we require our greatest strength to carry us forward. These are the times when we require the equanimity of our mind to carry us forward. And I personally tell you, the whole principle of yoga is aligned to this thought of strengthening your mind, strengthening yourself to carry yourself forward in times like this. I am to speak and we are to discuss on some fundamental principles of yoga. I will keep it very simple. It is like A, B, C, D of yoga. Friends, all of you, like I said, would have had the opportunity to search Google and you would have found so many answers to this one word yoga. And each one of us understands it differently. I had, uh, you know, a very, very good experiment we did, and you should know about this. You know, I had a friend who was the additional director general of police, and he was looking after the uh, prisons. And he said, let us do something in our prisons for yoga. And we sat down over a cup of tea, chai ke liye bethe, chai pe charcha. Or humne socha, he let us first find out what do these people at various parts of the country understand about yoga? Because we are in a process of drafting a manual of yoga, which will be applicable to all the jails throughout India. So, okay. so we contacted, you know, big jails, uh, five regions, one in Punjab, North, one is East, one in South, one in West and one in Central India. And we gave them a questionnaire which consisted of five questions. It was related to understanding what did they think yoga was. And we had very interesting answers. Someone in East thought yoga was closing your eyes and sitting there probably until you fall asleep. And there, there was someone from North who thought yoga meant closing your eyes and brewing your hands like this by breathing in, breathing out. Then people from the south of India thought yoga was set of exercises, physical exercises, like running on the same spot, doing 50 Surya Namaskars in one minute. Someone from the west thought yoga was sitting quietly and only doing your breathing. So what did we realize? Dear students, what we did realize is everyone has different concepts of yoga. So in this 30 minutes, ye jo minute hai, let us very simply understand what is the essence of yoga. We write it as Y-O-G-A, but we pronounce it as yoga. What is the fundamental principles of yoga? So that all of you who's attending and going through this yoga intern session, your fundamentals are very clear. What should this session enable? What is the key result, output of this session? If I wake you up at 2 in the morning and ask you some fundamental question, you should be able to answer. That is, that is what we are aiming at. First, let us understand you must be hearing variety of terminologies, isn't it? Some of you must have heard Hatha Yoga. Some of you must have heard Raja Yoga. Some of you must have heard Bhakti Yoga, Karma Yoga, isn't it? And then we also have so many classes of the other kind of yoga. Some of you visit various countries, and you look at the various options which are available in uh, 
Mumbai itself. And then you have the terms like power yoga, artistic yoga, aquatic yoga, gravitational yoga. And I am thankful to the Indian citizens that so far I have not heard of beer yoga in India. So that is a good thing to happen. And so we understand. Let's simplify. Yoga, you can understand in two ways. One is the classical or the traditional schools of yoga. Yoga ki prachin paddhatiya. All my young friends whose age is from 18 to 25 who are here sometimes get very afraid of this terminology called tradition. Please don't be afraid. What tradition means in yoga is something which is coming for hundreds of years but which has been able to be verified by science. And these training programs are being organized by Kaivalidham, an institute founded in 1924 by Swami Kuvalyanandaji. And for the first time, someone tried to understand yoga scientifically. So while I am talking to you, I will recommend two things to you. Please go to the website of Kaivalidham and go to the section videos. There, I would recommend you go through two videos. One is the documentary of Kaivalidham. You will understand how science of a yoga grew. Secondly, there is the story of our founder Swami Kuvalyananda. A man who did not wish to have a lot of publicity, but who did one of the most important contribution in terms of yoga. So look at it. You will learn, you will understand, you will immerse yourself in that principle of scientific yoga. So coming back. Tradition means what has been coming for a long time, which is verifiable. And therefore, you are sure that that is a way which prescribes right techniques. So when I spoke of Hatha Yoga, Hatha Yoga means what? Hatha Yoga in India has now remained Hatha practices in the western part of the world. Because the part, they identified that with physicality. Hatha Yoga essentially means essential practices through your body, asanas, pranayam, yam, niyam, to reach to the higher goals of mind. Simple. Hatha Yoga is practices which leads you further to ekagrata, centeredness of your mind and body. Then there is Raja Yoga. Raj Yoga was very strongly propounded by Swami Vivekananda ji. Then you have Bhakti Yoga, Yoga of Devotion, Selfless Devotion. So friends, you should understand each one of us has that element of devotion. Our parents tell us in the morning, before you go out, go to that temple, go in front of the God. Two minutes you close your eyes. Closing is eyes is to connect. But what happens nowadays? Before the exams, every one of you goes to that temple every day. Why? Bhagwan pass kar dena, Bhagwan distinction leana, Bhagwan first class leana. Devotion is about selflessly connecting. Not about asking God for return. It is not barter system. Hmm? There is karma yoga. Yoga for Devoted services which are selfless, not selfish. So many people you see nowadays, oh, we are giving food to the affected migrants, but we need selfie. We want an elder to cross the road, but we want selfie. Friends, 
Karma Yuga is about Nishkama Karma. It's not only philosophy. I tell you. I will recommend more than speaking. You know, it's said that well done is better than well said. While we are discussing, take one sankalp. Promise yourself one thing. Try to do one good thing selflessly for others. You would be doing yoga. Ask your mother if you can help at home. Ask your father if you can help in something. Ask your siblings if you can help in something. One deed which is not for you, which is for others. Karma yoga. Then there is jnana yoga. Jnana yoga is about understanding. And why do you want to understand? Because understanding takes you further. For example, in your life you have never seen a candle or a flame, burning candle. Now you are inquisitive about the candle. You see the flame, you have not seen uh, fire. Suppose you go to Andamans and there is one tribe, Aborigine, which is in Australia. Experiential knowledge. I was giving you an example of someone put his hand in the flame of the candle and realized immediately what that fire, that heat and that burning sensation is about. And here comes experiential knowledge. Knowledge is important because once your mind is clear, your understanding is clear, your life is more harmonious. Live example, I am giving this lecture or we are discussing. My team informs me, the great Arjun of Mahabharata is also here. He informs me, sir, now the internet is down. I have two options, get stressed, get anxious. And there is a third option that I realize that I cannot do anything about it. So remain stress free and wait for the internet to come back. This is Jnana. This is the knowledge in how you use it. So friends, we know getting anxious before examination will not help, but we get. We know anger amongst our friends is not good, but we get angry. So our effort is to understand and our ability to apply this understanding to ourselves is yoga. That is jnana yoga. There are many other schools such as Kundalini Yoga, Mantra Yoga, Laya Yoga. But since I just want to give you a fundamental idea, I said, now all these schools which we thought of, all these principles of Bhakti, Jnana, Hatha, all these we spoke of are referred together as the classical or the traditional School of Yoga. Yoga ki prachin paddhatiya. This is the foundation. And what are the principles of the classical schools of yoga? Mulbhut tattva kya hai? Iske. So friends, when you close your eyes, just remember it to be very simple. Yoga in its essence, is about your physical, mental, emotional, social, and spiritual well-being. Very simple. Five dimensions. Yoga aapke, shararik, manstik, manovednyanik, samajik, or adhyatmik lab ke liye. Why am I repeating this? Because friends, my dear students, most of us think of yoga only as set of postures or difficult asanas 
almost like doing circus. Yoga is about your holistic development. When you are young, definitely everyone wants to look and feel like, you know, they want to look like a strong, fit, probably, I should look at a good example like Akshay Kumar. And you have to think like a Sherlock Holmes. Only then you are complete. What's the point of being an Akshay Kumar and not be able to think? But then you have to be emotionally stable. Because you're physically fit, mentally alert, but emotionally every three minutes you cry. But you are physically fit, mentally alert, emotionally strong, but you cannot interact with the whole world. You have 7,323 friends on Facebook, but when you go to meet someone for tea, you don't know what to speak. Social well-being, finally, you are physically strong, mentally alert, emotionally stable, Socially all right, but you have never in your life thought that why are you here on this earth? Why? And answering that question, why? Connecting that question is spirituality. We celebrate birthdays and I always say there are two days very important. The happy birthday day, very important, we wish everyone. Second is the day when you actually get the answer that why you were born. So, this is the essence of yoga, friends. Close your eyes. Just absorb. Yoga is not only about physical exercises. It's not only about postures. Now, the other newer practices or newer schools of yoga which we spoke of, we spoke of power yoga, we spoke of gravitational yoga, we spoke of aquatic yoga. So we are not here to say this is good, this is bad. No. Everyone has a right to choose what they want. But remember friends, the newer trends of yoga are Styles or fads. Fads come and fads go. You are born in 80s or not only 80s, 90s, I think now, teenagers. If I ask you a question, what is bell bottom? Our friends here also don't know. Right in front of me, Rishu is there. He does not know. Bell bottom, what is it? So you should Google search bell bottom. So life goes in a circular form. So these fads come and fads go. But something like Kaivaladham, classical principle of yoga, almost 100 years we are here. And I am very confident, even after we depart, this will continue for more 500 years, 1000 years. Because your foundations have to be strong. You cannot be only at superficial level. So what these fads try to do is essentially take care of your physical self. Slim, trim and beautiful, that is what I call it. Nothing bad. But do not forget, that is the first step. The next step for you is to be with your own self. Be with your own self at level of your mind. So I will repeat again. Close your eyes. Yoga in its essence is for your physical, mental, emotional, social and spiritual. Do you have to do everything together urgently? No. Practice. Your question, sir, how much do you practice? One hour, we don't have time. We have to go to school. We have to do college. We have to study. We have to party. Friends, take out five minutes every day. Increase it to 10 minutes. Increase it to 15 minutes. Sincerity is important. You may be serious. You need not be serious. But sincerity is important. 
Five minutes. Just stand on your one feet. Do a chakrasana. Just do it for five minutes. Very good. Sit quietly. Do a brahmari pranayam for five minutes. Once you start practice, there might be a day when you are really anxious. You are going for your first interview. Your palms are sweating. Your breath is irregular. Then you remember, what do I do? Oh, let me do brahmari for five minutes. It will benefit you. So yoga is about practice. And friends, all our effort here, you know, to reach this message to you. We have five people here. Like I said, we have an Arjun, we have an Udit, we have Rishu, we have Ivan, we have Meghna. These five people, what are they trying to do? Reach this message to you. Take that effort. Effort for what? For our own well-being. So friends and my dear students, we understand now yoga, what it is. We understand the classical aspect of yoga. We understand the newer kinds of yoga. All right. Now most of you who have joined us from in and around Maharashtra and of course throughout the world or India, but most of them are through the state. So being here, I feel it is very important that we understand the different lineages of yoga. Yoga kahan kahan se shuruvat hui, kis kis sanstha ne shuruvat ki, iske baare mein thodi jankari hum ko chahiye. See, we should be self-educated. General knowledge of yoga. And now one very important announcement I had to do, luckily I remembered it. You know, you yourself and the your friends who have registered on our website may get this very nice feeling that we are going to grant you the certification of yoga interns like this. No. Mistaken. After you finish, we are going to conduct an online examination. And those who are successful in that will be awarded the certification. So if you have this thinking that I have registered and I will sleep and get up at 10 o'clock in the morning and then get certification for yoga intern. Misunderstanding. Please tell your friends that the videos are there on YouTube. We will, after 10 days, we will be conducting an examination. We will be evaluating you and this examination should not stress you. It is how you have learned to de-stress yourself. Okay, please tell your friends, everyone, schools in Pune, colleges in Mumbai, colleges in Ratnagiri, Raigar, SNDT Women's University. Please, please be very clear about it. So, thank you for that little shift in my information sequence. But we were speaking of our necessity to know the different schools of yoga, especially because, friends, you remember. Yoga is a cultural heritage of India. Next eight days, you will learn more about the philosophy. Philosophy is very important. Ab don't think in any bore okay, sir. Wo kitna philosophy karoge, ab bohut parishan hoge. Every science was a philosophy. Please remember. Therefore, it is necessary. For us to understand it in depth. What are we now trying to do? We have some slides. If those slides work, very good. We are going to see what are the various teachers over a period of time in India. Who have made a difference to this community of yoga. Yoga schools are like different rivers. Trying to reach you to the same goal, same ocean. So college, we have teacher teaching us statistics. We have a teacher teaching us chemistry, biology, mathematics, geometry. They are different teachers teaching differently, but trying to take you to the same goal. And that is what is important in understanding the various schools of yoga. Right? So let us see and start. We have around 10 minutes and we'll try to finish it in 10 minutes. 
The first slide is here and this is our founder, Revert Swami Kovalyanandaji, original name Sri Jagannath Gune, hailed from Amalnev. So we were understanding about Swami Kovalyanandaji. He had two options. Either go, take sannyas to serve the humanity. His teacher, Madhav Dasji says, no sannyas, go to the world, make them understand the essence of yoga, interpret yoga scientifically so everyone understands. So Swami Madhav Dasji Maharaj was the teacher to Swami Kuvalyanandaji and Swami Kuvalyanandaji was responsible to establish the Kaivalyadham Yoga Institution in Lunavala, which has various branches. Please visit the website. Do this research. You may have one question on this when we take the examination. Next. Yeah. Then, Swami Madhav Das Ji had two students. So, one was Swami Kuvalyanandaji. Ji. The other was Sri Yogendra Ji, who established his institution in Mumbai. So you have something in Santa Cruz, which simplifies yoga and teaches. So Swami Kuvalyanandaji and uh, Sri Yogendra Ji. Swami Kuvalyanandaji's detail, you should look at the website and the documentary. And we go, we are moving a little fast because we need to finish in time. But the next slide shows you about the yoga institution. The teachings of these students were scientific, simple, easy to understand. So 1917, Swami Kuvalananji established Kavilidham in Baroda, but not a formal setup. 1924, he set up Kavilidham in Lonavla. It was a formal setup. Sri Yogendraji established the yoga institution in Mumbai in 1901, 880. 1919, he moved to US for a few years and then he came back and the place remains the same. Then, you have another lineage of Sri Krishna Macharya. Krishna Macharya comes from the south of India. He was there in Mysore under the ages of the Maharaja of Mysore who was very interested in yoga and physical culture. Krishna Macharaji was also a person who had knowledge in Ayurveda. So my dear students, reminding you again, why are we discussing this? We are discussing this because you need to understand which are the various teachers in 1900s which influenced yoga as to what it is in this world today. You may have a USA which says an 18 billion industry of yoga, all that is good, but essentially the practice aspect has been through these schools. So Krishna Macharaji was a very astound teacher. He was quite focused on the physical side of yoga. So Maharaja of Mysore, you see, that time we had this feeling of brotherhood amongst all and everyone. So the Maharaj of uh, Mysore uh, sent him to Swami Kuvalyanandaji in 1940s. And he says, he said, exchange the notes. He wanted Krishna Macharaji to know more about pranayamic practices. So Krishna Macharaji was here in Kavilidham for almost a week, learning from Swami Kuvalyanandaji, showing him what he knew. Very good exchange of thoughts. This is a letter which, which is about this great relationship which both shared. Krishna Macharaji had three students BKS Ayangar, the Padma Vibhushan, Sri Desikacharya, he was his son and his student, Patabi Joyce, it was his student. These three established three different lineages of yoga, which is very popular, post-1925. Here you have the screen, on the screen, Patabi Joyce. And then we will see 
another uh, lineage of Swami Shivananda Saraswati. Shivananda Saraswati hailed from Kerala, was an MBBS doctor, did his practices in north of India in the lap of Himalayas, established the Divine Life Society. He had three great students, Swami Satyananda, who went on to establish the Bihar School of Yoga, Swami Vishnu Devananda, and Swami Chidanand Saraswati, who succeeded him as his disciple. Friends, Swami Madhavdas Ji, one lineage, the science of yoga, simplicity of yoga, this research of tradition. You have Krishna Macharji focused on more physical aspect of yoga, but integrated with three students, Ayangarji, Patabi Joyce, and Desikachara. You have Swami Shivananda Ji, more focused on the philosophy of yoga with his students, Vishnu Devananda Ji, Swami Satyananda Ji, and Swami Chidananda Saraswati. There are many, uh, many lineages, but we are speaking of the strong lineage. Then you have Swami Rama of Himalayas. Swami Ram established the first ever hospital where yoga was integrated, modern hospital. He was succeeded by Swami Veda Bharati. Very strong lineage, which is called the lineage of Himalayan masters. So these are those who were there in 1930s, 1940s, Swami Kovalananji, 1970s, Yogendraji, Madhavdas. So friends, remember these names. Try to Google. You know, you can't Google movies. You can't Google best food. No. So learn, learn more about something which relishes our own internal self. Spend some time. Now you come to the modern times. You have, everyone knows Swami Ramadevji, great contribution to yoga. But remember friends, the Patanjali Yogapit, this Patanjali he speaks of actually is Maharishi Patanjali who was born, visited this earth 2500 years ago. I was with a student one week ago, I asked him. Do you know about Maharishi Patanjali? He says, yes, sir. I said, what do you think? He says, no, sir. Patanjali, just I think 50 years, they manufacture everything. That is not Patanjali. Maharishi Patanjali is the father of yoga who wrote the Yoga Sutra. You will learn about it. But he is the founder. So if you have practiced yoga, if you are born in India or anywhere, if I ask you who is the founding father of yoga as we understand it today, without even opening your eyes, you should say this name Maharishi Patanjali. You should know. All of us should know. We owe this to the science of yoga. We owe this to this great tradition of yoga. Post Patanjali, there were many rishis. Rishis can be understood as scientists. They experimented inside. Today, scientists experiment outside. So we have Maharishi Patanjali. On his name, Swami Ramdevji started his institution, Patanjali Yogpeet. Very good work. He has gone to the grassroots level and taught yoga. So if you look, if you are traveling in train and if you see someone doing <laughs> that means he has learned from Swamiji. You have the art of living, Shri Shri Ravi Shankarji, who has focused on the practice of Sudarshan Kriya, many, many good things. He gets peace to the world. That is also an aspect. So he is also a very renowned teacher. You have Isha Foundation, Sadhguru. I was in Coimbatore, I had very good time. He teaches the aspects of yoga in a very deep way. So one of the great contributors towards the science of yoga. You have S. Vyasa, a university in Bangalore, which does a lot of research, a lot of education. 
is contributing greatly, Google them. And then there are many more. There is one last which I will conclude, which is called Dev Sanskrit Vishwavidyala in Haridwar. Again, friends, why are we discussing this? We are discussing this because you stay in a country which is a rich tradition, a rich culture of yoga. All are one, all are united. We are going towards the same aim of making better human beings. So all of us should travel together. There is nothing called this is good, that is good, this is bad. No, all are on the same boat. We are helping everyone to reach there. You are our dear students from various universities. I am so happy you have chosen to spend these two hours in the morning towards educating yourself something which will be helpful for you for lives to come, for time to come. Because this is such a strong element that it will surface when you need it the most for your health, for your well-being, for your complete equanimity. So I shall now conclude before the internet concludes so that we have a good closure. Please be regular, please attend the sessions. We will be in touch with you. We have your email IDs and we are sure that we will walk this path together. Last five years, we have conducted huge number of yoga interns program. We completed around 15,000 students. A lot of them have come and done the certificate courses with us, which is good because that means you're going to the next step. So please remember, yoga is about dedication. It's about devotion. It is about discipline. And you can do all of this if you have managed to be disciplined, be at home for these many days. It is discipline. You have decided to watch this and practice this. You are devoted and dedicated. So spend your time. God has given us this time to uplift our own self, to learn, to acquire those skills in our life which are important. So thank you so much. And we shall conclude the session with recitation of the mantra Purna Mada Purna. Please close your eyes and let's recite together. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamevavashishyate Om Shanti Shanti Shanti